Now the third application of delay is to use it to widen up sounds in a stereo field. An interesting ha thing happens when echo with echo that once the delay gets very short, usually around 30 milliseconds, we no longer hear two sounds, but we hear if we pan the original left and a very short delay to the right, then we can start to widen up the sound. It can really help widen the sound in the stereo field. We'll hear an example later on. So delay can be basically used in three different applications. Your typical echo, 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 either a short delay, which gives us a thickening sound, and then finally a way to spread the sound out wide in the stereo field. We'll hear a great example of that in the mixing section. Now reverb is closely uh, related to delay. In fact, reverb can just be thought as nothing more than just a ton of delays so densely packed together we can't even hear those individual uh, echoes, but we have an effect like this. So if reverb is very closely related to delay, we'd probably see a, a lot of similar parameters, and in fact we do. We have a decay time, which is the length of time that the reverb dies down. We have a parameter that is called pre-delay, and that is the amount of time that it takes uh, for us to get an, these early reflections off of the walls. Um, you can imagine it in a room like this, we probably, it'd probably take about 30 or 4 milliseconds for those initial echoes to come off the wall and then obviously there would be a series of other reflections would just bounce around all around the room until it dies down maybe a second or so later. In most of your reverb effects you'll find a certain setting uh, like a, a plate, a room or hall. We can all imagine a room or a hall but what the heck is a plate? Well in the early days the only artificial way to make a reverb was to use a big metal plate that the old guys used to send their signal through and the plate vibrated and gave off kind of an artificial reverb. You see them a lot of uh, guitar amps as well. Anyway, we kind of fell in love with that kind of sound and some people still prefer it to this day, uh, particularly uh, on vocals. So again, what type of routing would we normally put a reverb on? That's right, an effects loop as is the way to give a differing amount of reverb to all of the different channels. So, I mean, why do we use reverb? Reverb places our sound into an environment. It might be a small room uh, on a guitar, maybe a larger room on a vocal, or a big hall and a snare drum. For the most part, reverb places a sound more often at the distance, and this can be really helpful to position in 3D space, um, something that really only has two dimensions in terms of the stereo field. The more reverb, the more it tends to kind of drift off back behind the speakers. So adding a little bit more reverb to backing vocals tends to place them a little bit further back in the mix. It works well. Now this is a bit of a uh, dated effect, but anybody remember this sound? You don't fool me, cause I heard guys in show. That was my favorite part of working for Phil. I used to I worked for him for about uh, two, three years. And every night when that part came up, you'd see like thousands of hands all just ready to just do that, uh, that uh, drum roll. Um, and here's, here's the way to get that sound. It was actually made popular by, uh, or kind of stumbled upon by Hugh Padgham, who uh, uh, produced Face Value. And they put a gate after the reverb. So the whole idea is this, is that when you crank up, if you have a little reverb, it sounds big. Add some more, it sounds bigger. So you'd think, maybe if I add a whole bunch, it'll sound great. But what happens is those reverb tails all just layer on top of each other until it just gets... Uh, this is, doesn't sound good anymore. So with a gated reverb, what you can do is that it can have this massive burst of reverb and then it cuts off as soon as it gets down below a certain threshold. So it ends up being kind of like pop, like that. So you get this massive pop, but instead of it going pop, like that just goes pop and just, uh, just stops off straight, uh, straight after that. Now, that effect to, if, if you are wanting to get that Phil Collins sound, that massive drum sound, there's a couple of things to do. Um, gated reverb works really well. Another thing is that he took, takes his heads, bottom heads off. So it's just a single head on the top, no heads on the bottom of his drum, and loose tuning. Man, he's like, his heads are almost flapping. So it's just a great way to get that sound.